Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the proper sizing guidelines for passing and getting payouts from prop firm challenges based on the different size accounts and the different drawdowns that are available. So if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, especially through prop firm accounts, then you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and watch this video all the way to the end. Uh, if you're new here, I trade futures. I've been trading for four years now. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. It took a lot of trial and error and lots of lessons, but I became more consistent over time and I believe that you will as well if you're not already. Uh, I trade NASDAQ and ES primarily but a little more NASDAQ lately and all intraday. So without further ado let's dive into the video. All right so just starting up on the left we see the 25k full account right here and we can see that the profit goal is 1500 the trailing threshold is also 1500. So in this case if you're trading NASDAQ then you know your max contracts is four which is obviously way too huge. You wanna look at every single account by, okay, what is my current risk reward ratio and what is my current win rate? And for most people, you know, a good win rate is like 60% with a 1R or 1.5 or 2R. And if you have a you know, 50, 50 to 60% win rate with 1R, 1.5R or 2R, if that's your strategy, then you have to then to figure out what's the average kind of stop loss you likely have in terms of points. I'll just use my strategy as an example. Most of my stop losses are about 40 points on NASDAQ. So if your stop loss is around 40 points per trade, then you're gonna to have to factor in what kind of size you can trade to not make it not likely to blow the account. So my personal preference is obviously I go a little I go greater size on evals until it's a PA just to speed up that process. Once it's a PA account, then I go just down in size a bit. Um, and what this looks like is I basically, I size so that way in the eval, I'll only lose the account if I take three losses in a row because it's, it's, it's a little bit rare for me to take three losses in a row. I can take three losses in a row uh, in my strategy multiple times. It, it's obviously happened, but uh, it doesn't happen very often. Two losses in a row happens very often, but three losses in a row doesn't happen very often. So I personally size in the eval stage on any eval so that way it takes three losses to lose the account. So what that looks like on a 1500 trailing threshold or $1,500 drawdown on 40 points, if I just trade a uh, five MNQ and I take a 40 point loss, that's $400 loss, right? One full contract is an $800 loss. So if I take two losses on one contract on the 25K account, my account's blown. So I won't go that heavy. I'll actually do the five or six MNQ. Because if I do five MNQ, it's going to be a $400 per loss, which means three losses will bring me to 1200 So I'll go a little bit heavier in size, which would be more like six MNQ, like six micros of sizing for the 25K full. Uh, and then when I go to, to the PA stage, I make sure that I have to take five losses in a row to blow the account. And that is extremely rare for my personal strategies. Again, it's possible, but it's extremely, extremely rare. So I, I like to find the balance of, you know, maximum size I can do while also factoring in having a three, four loss streak, um, but not really thinking, hey, you know, uh, not really factoring in the five loss streak. So if I have a five loss streak, then I will lose the PA account. But, um, it's, it's extremely unlikely. What's more likely is having like a three or a two loss streak and then the odd time, like a four loss streak, but five losses in a row, extremely rare for me. So because of that, that's what I like to do. And you can use all this knowledge I'm saying in this video to go over to the risk of ruin calculator and then make those calculations based on your win rate and risk or ratio and figure out what's the best approach and sizing guideline for your personal strategy. But you know, just for sake of the video, we'll just use my strategy. So my strategy now that I use with prop firms is a 66% win rate and it is a one to one R. So 66% win rate, one R, that's the strategy I'm using and the approach I'm using for prop firms. And that just gives me the most consistency and less likelihood to blow the accounts because if you go for a higher R with a lower win rate, then there are more scenarios where you do get that longer loss streak and then do blow the account. So I go for the more consistent profits. I'll, you know, mind you, less profits overall, but when you're trading 20 or 30 accounts, a less profits overall isn't a big deal if you're able to have more consistency. That's just the balance I found with prop firms. So that's the approach that I take, one R, 66% win rate. So now that we've covered the 25K, let's move on to the 50K account. So now with the 50K account, these are the ones that I talked about in previous videos that are the best bang for your buck, uh, you know, lowest amount of money and uh, best value. So this one has a $2,500 trailing threshold. So with this case, with the 50K full, again, 
I have a 40 point stop loss. So if I trade one NQ, which is 10 micros, then it's $800 per loss. And that's the size that I do on my 50K accounts when I'm in the eval stage, because again, three losses in a row is $2,400. At two losses in a row is $1,600. So if I take the three losses in a row, I get pretty much at that trailing threshold. So three losses in a row makes me makes me lose the accounts. But as soon as I get to the PA stage, I actually drop it to six to eight MNQ. But if the loss is 500 on six MNQ, then it's gonna take it's gonna take five losses to blow the account if you if I'm trading six MNQ with my 40 point stop loss because the drawdown is 2500, and uh, a loss with six MNQ is about 490. So 490 times five brings you roughly to 2500. And that's the approach I do. So again, you know, six to eight MNQ when it's a PA, but it's an eval, it's it's one full uh, mini contract, even though the max is 10 contracts. So again, this is just giving you realistic expectations of the proper sizing to use, even though these prop firms gave you way, way, way more size. And that's likely the, the reason why most people, uh, or maybe you watching is hasn't got the payout yet. It's just because the sizing is off. Like if you had a personal account, the, the size they give you that you would not trade anywhere near that size if you had your own personal live account because you would blow that account in, in two losses if you use that size or like one loss. Like it's just completely unrealistic to trade the size that they give you or even half the size that they give you. Uh, and obviously they do that so that way you do get tempted to, do, to trade that size for the t potential profits and then blow the account. So again, purpose of this video is just to help you understand the best approach for sizing so that way you do have more consistency and get to that payout instead of blowing those accounts and just keep on turning. So now that we covered the uh, sizing for the 50K, um, most people don't trade the 75Ks. So we'll cover the 100K and then we'll, we'll cover the uh, 250K because those are the next most common traded accounts. So on the 100K, 3000 trillion threshold, but honestly, I wouldn't even recommend trading this account whatsoever because the profit goal is two times the trailing threshold, which means it's far more challenging to pass and then get to the payout stage. Um, because remember, in the payout stage, you can't take a payout until you uh, reach the profit uh, threshold, and until you reach the trailing threshold plus $100. So it, you know, there's just, so it's infinitely more profits you have to get to get to the payout stage than if you trade the 50K account. So it's just not worth it. Um, again, it's, it's just really not worth it compared to the trailing threshold you have, but again, we'll go over this account. So the 100K account, 3,000 trailing threshold, uh, it's very similar to the 50K because not much bigger of a trailing threshold. So for me personally, I would trade 12 MNQ with my 40 point stop loss because three losses would cause me to lose the account. And then when I do get to that next stage, I could trade eight MNQ or a maximum of one full uh, mini contract, but that's a little risky. So I would stick to eight MNQ because even on eight MNQ, again, three losses in a row would cause me to uh, lose the account. Or sorry, five five losses in a row when I have a PA account would cause me to lose the account because with eight MNQ, the loss is 650. So two losses in a row, that's 1,300. Uh, four losses in a row is 2,700. And then uh, the five losses in a row would bring it about 3,200. And that would blow the account. So now, last one, we'll just cover the 250K account because they did have a good deal on this. And um, this one obviously very poor um, because it takes far, far too long to actually pass this. Because again, using proper sizing, like what I said, all the sizing is all based on the trailing threshold. So the trailing threshold is 6,500, that's awesome, but the profit goal is nearly three times the trailing threshold. That makes it far longer to pass. Um, using an example, um, the size you can, uh, you can use to you know, not blow the accounts unless you take three losses in a row is 25 micros, if you're trading 25 micros and you have a 40 point stop loss, then with 25 micros, 40 point stop loss, it's 2K per loss. So three losses in a row, you know, you, have, you barely have any room left. You pretty much blew, blew the account with the three losses in a row. And if you're using a one to one R, well then uh, 2000, you have to have uh, a win. You have to have, you have to have made eight R just to pass. So this 250K account requires eight R to pass. Whereas if you go over to the 50K account, the 50K account will require four R to pass. So 50K requires four R to pass, but meanwhile, 250K requires eight R to pass. So I don't know about you, my, my strategies in total, um, they average about five to 10 R per month. And five to 10 R per month is, is very good. Uh, you wouldn't think so, but again, when you have 20 accounts, or you have a lot of accounts, five to 10 R per month is, is fantastic. And um, 
that's just showing that, okay, it would take a month or if you have a bad month, it could take like a month and a half or two months to pass the 250K because you need 8R, like one month or one and a half months to pass. Whereas only need 4R on the 50K, so it could take two weeks. If you have a good two weeks, could fully take two weeks to pass the 50K, but it could take a month or a month and a half to pass the 250K. So again, for that reason, uh, really not wise to trade the 250K. So all we're gonna say is focus on the 50K accounts and just get more of them if you want to make more money. Don't really waste your money on the 250K accounts. Let me know if that helped you. Leave a like down below if that did help. Um, again, I just wanna help you improve your sizing so that way you can get that payout instead of just continuously blowing accounts. And it's just deceiving, right? Like it makes you think that you can just trade all the size, but if you really wanna have, if you really wanna treat trading like a business, like how it should be, then I believe the best approach is, you know, you trade the evals a little more aggressive. So as an example, I size so that way I have to lose three trades in a row to blow the account in the eval stage. Then once it's a PA, I reduce size a bit and now I have to lose five trades in a row to lose the PA accounts. And that one is a lot more unlikely. That for me personally with my strategy, that only happens like twice a year. So, you know, two times every 12 months, I'll blow the accounts. Every other time I'm, I'll be having consistent payouts. So I'm willing to take that risk because if I try to factor in, you know, more of a, of a drawdown, then I'll have to make the size even smaller. And then the size will just be so small that it may take too, like a just very long time to even get a payout. So you want to find that balance between sizing so you're not wasting time by just taking a bunch of small trades and, you know, being able to make it through some decent drawdowns through your strategy. That's going to conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.